um, someone wrote this entitled The World According to Dad. These are words that most dads have said at some time or another to their children. See, be quiet, I'm watching the ball. Why? Because I said so. How should I know? Go ask your mommy. Let's not tell mommy about this. I was not asleep, I was uh, thinking. Just wait till you have keys of your own. Father said to his daughter, what's wrong, honey? Usually you talk on the phone for hours. This time you only talk for 30 minutes. How come? She replied, it was the wrong number. <laughs> Someone noticed that the word father appears in the dictionary just before the word fatigue. And just before the word, just after the word fathead. So today, to all of us fatigue and fathead fathers of all kinds, fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, and stepfather, I want to take a moment to honor you and encourage you for your fatherhood. Your fatherhood is vital. Your existence and presence in your child's life means a lot to them, and your relationship with them your child is one of the most critical and significant relationship that they will ever have in their entire life. Because children learn everything from their parents. Parents are giving messages to their children. And especially fathers, they have a big impact on how their children view the world. Whether the world is safe or not whether the world is beautiful or not, whether the world that we are living is worth living or not. In many ways, fathers influence children. Don't you think it's kind of sobering? If you're a dad, what kind of mark are you leaving on your ch children? The researchers say a father's lifestyle and attitude toward relationship, morality, money, work, play, marriage, and faith have a lifelong impact on their children. And I think it's true. Quite often I realize how my dad impacted my life, especially my attitude to my relationships, way of thinking, my hobbies, work, and my marriage and family, and even how to arrange living room furniture in the parsonage. I often discover my dad in me, and I'm stunned. And now I know mine will certainly impact my four children's as well. To Harrison and my other sons, though they are still young, younger, my approval is everything to them. Harrison always looks at me and asks me to know that if it's good, if he's on the right track. He always tries to get my approval. And when he gets it, it looks like he gains everything in the world. To my children, my words, my compliments become their life standard and goals to achieve. And to my daughter, Haley, it's quite a little bit different. I know I'm her guidepost for what to expect of men and what to expect of men's attitude toward women. If I am abusive, she will think it's normal, and she will meet a man who are abusive. So my relationship to her mother, Lee, becomes a template for what her relationship with a man will be when she grows up. Because girls learn and draw conclusion about what men are like from their father. There's a saying, father is a son's first hero and a daughter's first love. How many girls ever said, I'm going to marry my daddy? And we hear her mom says, are you sure? My boys and girls are watching and learning from me to figure out how to be successful as a man and how to be in a relationship with a man. It's kind of sobering. It requires me to be intentional about how I speak and live. It requires me to evaluate if my life match my words, especially I'm a preacher. I speak a lot publicly. They are watching me. Your words are matching your sermon, your life. 
and requires me to be intentional about how I treat my wife and others. It requires me to be intentional about identifying the lessons I hope my children will take from me. But here's a problem. There was an ex extensive study done in England, and it says that the men don't reach full maturity until 43 years old. <laughs> Which means, when we are finally mature, our kids are already teenagers or in college. I am 33 years old now. My children have to wait 10 years more for their daddy to be mature. That's a long way. One time I was thinking about what my children will say about their daddy someday when they grow up. And I came up with 10 things that I hope my children will say about me someday when they remember me. Take a look. Number one is that he loved us. I could see it in his words, his face, and his actions. Number two, take a look at the next screen. He made us laugh. It was always fun to spend time with my daddy. There will be honor to me. Number three, take a look next screen. He was honest, both to us and to others. I never remember him telling a lie. Number four, he worked hard with passion. passion. He loved and valued what he did as a minister. He loved his people and loved his parishioners. Number five, he cared about people more than money. Yes, of course. Number six, he was quick to forgive. He was slow to anger. He knew he had been forgiven sinner. And he offered the same grace to others. Number seven, he was generous with his resources, money, his time, and his energy to share with others. Number eight, he loved his family. He cared for his parents and loved having everyone together. Number nine, we knew we could count on him when we needed him. He was always there for us anytime, day or night. And number 10, he loved God. He kept his eyes and mind open to God and tried to do everything in honor of God. And later on, I realized that I forgot one of the most important things and I added it. That is, number 11 is this. My father loved my mother so much and he was always faithful to her what if my children will say those about me when they remember me all fathers and grandfathers in this room i i'm wondering what your list what is what is in your list what if your children can say such things about you when they remember you when you are gone and I am gone? Then we will be a successful dad. Well, some time ago I read a very touching story about a pastor that I will never forget. His young son had been very sick. After his son undergone an exhaustive series of tests, the father was told the shocking news that his son had a terminal illness. The father believed that his little boy will have an eternal life in heaven with God, with Jesus after death. But he wondered how to inform the little boy that he'll die soon and see their parents no more for a while. After earnestly seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit, he went with a heavy heart to his son's bedside. Then he told him, that the doctors could promise him only a few more days to live. And the father asked his son, My son, are you, afraid to, are you afraid to meet Jesus in heaven? Blinking away a few tears, the little boy said bravely, No, not if it's like you, daddy. If Jesus is like you, I'm not afraid. I know fatherhood is not easy. It has an incredible challenges, and sometimes it carries incredible pains. But nevertheless, what if my children say to me, if Jesus is like you, I will trust him. I won't be afraid if he is with me. 
Now we all have different death story. Some of you have an incredible death. And maybe for some of you, it is just painful. Maybe your death wasn't there in your life. So have nothing to say. Maybe you have someone who stepped into your life, that role, as a stepdad. Or just lived only with your mom. Or here's a good news for you. That is, there is a perfect father we can all have access to. And more than that, a meaningful relationship with. I've known this dad for over 30 years now, and he has never let me down. He's always been there for me. The book of Psalm chapter 68 says like this. Take a look at the next screen. A father of the fatherless and protector of widow, single moms, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. Father is always big, huge to their children. But remember, we all have the biggest daddy in heaven. Here's a funny story. One day, this young man was talking to God. He said, Father God, what's the million years like to you? God says, son, to me a million years is like a one second. He said, Father God, what's a million dollars like to you? God says, son, a million dollars to me is like a one penny to you. He thought about it in a moment and finally got up with his courage and said, God, would you give me a penny? And God said, sure, just a second. I'm saying is this, our Father God is much bigger and stronger and wiser and way more powerful and loving than any other earthly fathers. Nobody gets a perfect earthly father, but we all have the heavenly father who are perfect. And now I want to tell you, because of him, even though we didn't have a perfect father, we can be a good father now to our children and grandchildren. I believe one of you, in every one of you in this room who is a father, could be a really good dad. It's not about your situation. It's not about your wealth. It's not about your poor. It's about your commitment. And it's about your actions and resolve to honor God and love your children. I think one of the best things that a good dad does is that he pays attention to his children. Anyone who's been around a little kid might hear this cry, Daddy, look at me, Daddy. Watch me, Dad. So what I can see? I hear this cry every day, every second at home. Actually, what a kid is asking is, will you notice me? Will you pay attention to me? And you know, there's an incredible power in simply paying attention to someone. When you pay attention to somebody, you are communicating value and a sense of worth. You are saying to them, you matter to me. You are important. You are giving the message. According to a research done by Harvard University study team, they say increasing numbers of young fathers want to take an active role in raising their children. 82% of fathers aged 21 to 39 chose to have a work schedule that allowed more time, more time with their families. And fathers who are actively involved with their children can be a whole, wholesome influence. According to the research published by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, when fathers eat meals with their children, go on outing with him, with them, read them books, and help with homework, there are fewer behavior problems higher levels of sociability, and a higher level of school performance among children and adolescents. It's an am amazing. What I want to say is this, this, uh, we can be a good dad with a small amount of intentional efforts. I have a question for all of you. Are you giving and paying attention to your children, all dads and all mothers? Are you, are, are you making time and room to be with our children, with paying our undivided attention to them? 
And when you are sitting around the table with them and eating meals with them together, you will make a difference in their lives. Very easy, simple things. And I believe eventually it will give you the true joy and happiness in your life. I will question all of you. When you get to the end of your life, what do you think you're going to take to eternity? In the book of Psalm chapter 90, the Bible puts the great words of wisdom. Take a look at the next screen. Psalm chapter 90. The days of our lives are 70 years or 80 if you are strong. Nowadays, 80 or 90, whatever. Even though, even then, their span is toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we are fly away. We are like a grass. In the morning it flourishes and the evening it fades and withers. There's a wisdom for life that leads us to look back our life and check our life. Sometimes I think today is the best, ta best time in my family, in my life. And I'm grateful for my family and our four children that they are with me and my wife. I think our life and family, family relationship is like a messy table. When I sit around the messy table with my four kids for dinner, you know, the table is always a mess. Hayden spills water, Hendrickson is crying, Harrison and Haley never stop chatting, spitting up. My wife and I yell at them, stop talking, don't spill water, stop playing with food. You know, when my wife and I just got married, the table was neat and clean and looked elegant and stylish. But when we had a baby, the table was never the same. It's a mess. I once heard, the days go slow, the years go fast. Sometimes I think, one day, in 30 years from now, my wife and I, only two, still be sitting around this table. We will make it all the way through a meal in one sitting. Nobody's going to spill, nobody's going to cry, nobody's going to chat, nobody's going to spit up, and nobody's going to play with food. The table will be neat and clean and elegant and stylish again. But I know, sitting around the table, we will miss today. This messy table where we spend time with these four troublemakers. We'll be looking at the four empty chairs with tears. There's a wonderful saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, and that's why it's called the present. I'm wondering, do you like a neat table or do you like a messy table? Our life is like a table. Actually, our family relationship is like a messy table. It can't be always neat, it can't be always clean. Sometimes it's mess. Sometimes it's a pain. But we'll see one day, love is more like a messy table. And that is why my family, our family, is so beautiful and valuable. I want to wrap up my message. But I have to say this. I'm so grateful and proud to be a dad of my four children. And I pray to God, God, thank you. One of the greatest gifts in my life are my sons and daughters that you have given to me. And I think of my dad. As you know, he's visiting here today. And I pray, thank God. Yeah, that is my dad, that irreplaceable. And I am his son, though he was not a perfect dad. Friends, Father's Day is on the way. Don't let the Father's Day, we can just go by without celebration or what it means to be a dad. When you sit around the table, actually I had a first dinner with my, with my both parents in nine years, last, son, last Monday when they got, got here. They said, in Korea when my, my mom said, when I and your dad eat 
at the dinner table, we don't talk. We just eat, quiet, clean. <laughs> and she said, wow, here with these four grandchildren, it's like a party every day. <laughs> you know what I mean. When you sit around the table, bless your father, bless your husband, bless your grandfather, great-grandfather, and bless your children. Bless each other and honor each other. Give them your loving words. Your family is the greatest gift God has given to you, and he so loved you. That's why you have your loving dad, your loving mom, your husband, your wife, and your children. They will go with you forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have given us our dad. Because of them, we are here. We are living our lives. Of course, there are a lot of troubles and struggles and pains. And that wound doesn't go away, Lord. This time, Lord, we want to honor and encourage and strength our single moms who have to take a role of motherhood and fatherhood. You give them wisdom and power and strength. And Lord, all fathers and grandfathers who are in this room, you give them wisdom, love, and grace to share with their families, their children. And Lord, you give your grace and hope to all children to honor their parents. Thank you, Lord. In this way, we see the kingdom of God at home. We love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.